Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the Sport Aviation Showcase in Deland, Florida. I want to show you something. This is the Cub Crafters Carbon Cub. It is the best-selling LSA in all of lsa -dom. And I want to show you something interesting. If you scratch the paint here metaphorically, you will find DNA of the Piper Super Cub. Super Cub was originally certified at a weight of 1,750 pounds. This particular airplane is engineered out to 1,865 pounds max growth. Yet light sports have to be flown at no greater than 1,320 pounds. What's up with that? Well, most of us know that it's because the light sport rule arbitrarily limited airplanes to 1,320 pounds or 600 kg. Long, complicated story. A month ago, a proposal surfaced to raise that limit to some unknown value. I don't know what that is yet, but I took a few minutes here at the showcase to talk to some of the manufacturers about what they think of the idea. I think the jury's out. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the entire industry thinks about this yet. We don't know enough about it. You know, this is this is a an idea that was floated less than a month ago. So we're still trying to figure it out. Obviously, uh, the the basic med has had an impact on our light sport airplane sales. We don't sell as many LSAs as we used to, purely because from a medical standpoint. Um, I think the first question that has to be answered is if the FAA is going to raise the, the gross weight limit on light sport airplanes, are they going to make that retroactive to every airplane that's out there in the fleet that weighs less than 1,500 pounds or 2,000 or whatever the number ends up being? And we don't know that. If, um, if it's going to be retroactive, for instance, if we have a customer who owns a Carbon Cub FX3, which has a 2,000 pound gross weight, and a year from now, the FAA comes back and says, okay, all 2,000 pound airplanes qualify for light sport. Does the guy that bought one of these a year ago now get to fly the airplane under light sport rules? Or is the FAA gonna give us a date certain and say from this point forward, any airplane that's built under 2,000 pounds gross weight can now be flown as a light sport? And I think until that question gets answered, the impact on our business is not really very well known. I believe it's a good idea. I believe it will help Bristol. We have uh, other planes in the work. He's working on a four-place plane. He's been testing that at uh, about 1,600 pounds, and he might be able to get the Bristol up to close to that weight, which will give us the ability to uh, reinforce the landing gear and the fuselage to make it more durable for flight school use. So in that regards, it will help us. And some of the Bristol people we've sold to have wanted uh, more payload. And the plane can have it, it's just a matter of paperwork. And we do believe Milan will certify the older planes to be the new higher weight, provided they do whatever needs to be done. But I believe nothing needs to be done and this plane could be certified at 200 pounds heavier. Same plane, same price. I think it will help us. Well, I think almost everybody has felt for some years that the 1,320 or 1,430 pound weights were arbitrary. NFAA would agree with that. So could it be a slightly higher number? Well, of course it could. Should it be a huge increase? Well, maybe. Perhaps that's possible too. But certainly some more weight. They've already uh, acceded to the requests from Icon and Terrafugia and some other companies that have applied for more weight and have granted them more weight under some conditions. So clearly these airplanes could use some more weight profitably and could reinforce them in ways that the legacy flight school community might embrace. Some feel that these airplanes can't be built robustly enough at the current weights to withstand the rigors of training. I don't agree with that because I think there's lots of evidence that these airplanes can, but of course one that can be built even more solidly uh, especially in the, things like landing gear and landing gear carry-throughs and so forth, that would make it better, no question. And the other fact is, is as this community has developed with light sport aircraft, people want more and more stuff on the airplanes. Autopilots is one idea, one idea, but uh, there's many of those kinds of things that people have said, well, could I have this and could I have that? Pretty soon you've got an airplane that's starting to get squeezed on useful load, which was very generous at first and has been getting smaller. So I think it's time, and FAA seems to be ready to do that. 
They're not going to do it to a hard number, they've said very clearly. It's going to be a formula, but that formula should allow weights perhaps as high as the 3,600 that was mentioned a while back. The FAA is approaching that, is, is categorizing aircraft on the risk exposure, and I think we all agree there's um, as little risk in light sport as there are uh, uh, other aircraft, uh, so if we can expand that envelope a little bit uh, and not increase any danger and maintain the safety, uh, that's probably a smart thing to do. This aircraft, the J200 series, is based on the four-seater in Australia. The gross weight for these aircraft is 1,540 pounds. Of course, here in the United States for the light sport market, the gross weight is 1,320 pounds. Uh, the airframe to bring it into the United States under light sport uh, was reduced on paper, the gross weight, to fit into light sport to 1,320. In Australia, they want the extra gross weight action because it's a four-place aircraft. So to bring it into the United States so that it will fit into the light sport parameter, the rear seats are taken out and the gross weight is reduced on paper so that it fits nicely into that regulation. Oh, I'm in favor of the raising the limit. I think it gives us much more opportunity. I do see some disadvantages to the industry, light sport industry because of the uh, aircraft that we deal with and what the market is. Right now, you've got wonderful aircraft that are well proven. Uh, for example, the Vector Sports Star which we and, and Harmony, the Vector line of aircraft which we represent, are proven in flight schools, well built, ready to go. And, and our performers, but they are capable of more. So having the additional weight would be a benefit. We would deal with uh, the true American pilot as far as size. So I see that as a, as a benefit. The disadvantage is people waiting to see what will happen on uh, this, this whole thing. The notice of proposed rulemaking comes in January, but then how long do we wait? It's like basic med. And then when we got basic med, it didn't quite meet the promise of flying on a driver's license.